Welcome to day number four of Beginner Tarot. We are on card number three, the Empress today. And the Empress is the card of motherhood. This is the card that we consider what a traditional role in society of a mother should be. So that a mother gives birth to a child and has unconditional love for that child. And they love that child above all else. And they put all of their heart and soul into caring for and raising that child. And even above law or logic or society, they still have that love and passion for that child. Now, let's get rid of the gender roles because that doesn't always happen. Mothers don't always have the unconditional love for their children, right? Sometimes it's fathers. Sometimes it's a step parent or an adoptive parent. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have a child or be a mother in the traditional sense to be the empress or act as the empress. It can be a card of passion about a project, something you're working on, something you're excited about. It could be your music, theater, movies, whatever it is that you truly enjoy and have a passion for that sometimes above logic, you'll put your efforts into that project and put your heart and soul into it. Even if maybe, hey, you might not even get paid for it, but it's something that you love doing. And that's the card um, of the Empress and what the Empress embodies. So thinking a little bit more about the Empress, we see her depicted a lot as mother nature because it's from where everything flows. All of the fruits and the vegetables and the plants, all abundance flows from the Empress. So this card is also associated with summer because in those climates, that's where we see all of these things being abundant. Now, when the Empress shows up in the reverse sense, that can mean simply for someone that they're not ready to become a mother. If that's a goal in their life or a step that they're thinking about taking, if it comes up as reverse, maybe it's saying that they're just not quite ready. It can also mean someone who is being selfish or someone who's trying to over control a situation. They're putting way too much logical thought into it and they're not allowing their passion to come through and be that driving force behind their project. So looking at a few different images of the mother, the, who's the empress, we do see, again, that, that flow from her, that um, all of the things are flowing in this image, you can see right out of her belly, um, all of the things in nature and how they're created. This is another great card for the empress because this one shows that mother figure. So she's sitting there actually being a mother to a child, but then we also see all of these fruits and vegetables surrounding her, indicating that idea of abundance in summer and when things are very plentiful and flowing correctly for the family. In the traditional Rider Waite deck, we see um, also this, the symbol for Venus because that is considered to be the sign of uh, feminine and love. And even though, again, it doesn't necessarily have to mean a gender role of male or female, but it's those ideas that in society, traditionally, the female was the mother and the male was the father. So the female would be the one who carried out those roles of caring for the children and being the loving, compassionate um, person in the relationship where the father was the leader who carried out the laws and um, controlled the discipline of the family. So we'll see the, the emperor next in our series and talk a little bit more about those roles. But the cards aren't necessarily saying that those roles have to be fixed like that. It's just a generalization to try to explain the difference between when we're talking about the empress and the emperor. This is another great image of the Empress, and I love this one just because you have that whole Mother of Dragons vibe to it. So you see the Empress picking up the baby dragon and that innocence that the baby dragon has and that true love that you're seeing from the Empress. This is another symbol where we're seeing the pregnant female. She has the red dress and the butterflies uh, symbolizing passion and having that passion, again, rather than that logical thought, that red color symbolizes that passion that the Empress should have. And then we're also seeing the fruit tree with her in this picture because bringing back around summer and abundance and fertility and when all of those things are growing. 
This one again shows the butterflies, that symbol of life. We think of the butterfly as a symbol of a life cycle, right? Because they are the caterpillar and they evolve into this beautiful butterfly. So butterflies are often seen as symbolizing that life cycle and that fertility and how life continues. And then for our fun deck, we have the Sanderson Sisters deck, uh, Hocus Pocus. And this one is supposed to be um, the mother. We only see one mother in the movie. So they chose the mother in the Sanderson Sisters movie to represent that card in this case. So now hopefully you know a little bit more about the Empress and what that card means. Again, don't get caught up on gender roles when we're talking about tarot because that's not necessarily how they're meant to be. It's just a method of describing how those cards behave and what qualities some of those cards symbolize. So thank you so much for joining me. And tomorrow we will be talking about the Emperor, which is the other end of this card and takes on the more fatherly role in the tarot deck. Thanks for joining me.